So in the last tutorial, we learned about auto run events, events that run automatically, and these can help you a lot in the future when it comes to creating intro scenes, or perhaps automatic events that occur when a map starts, or maybe even the intro scenes that occur at the beginning of the game. But we'll get into those later. Today, we're going to be looking at the second most important part of creating cutscenes, which is the move route. So if we go back to our event right here, you may have noticed that we created this very, very, very simple move route, which is just going to move the player up a couple times, move, look left, look right, and look up. And they say that the room is now empty. But that's what we're going to be focusing on today, which is going to be all this movement stuff and pretty much this entire box right here. Because there's a lot you can do, as you can imagine. And it's sort of like the eventing, because like, there's just so much stuff, you just got used to it. But let's get straight into it. So to start off, I'm actually going to delete all this stuff. I'm just going to have a move up a couple times just so they have room to do what we're about to do. But besides that, we'll be good to go. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind. The first thing is, there's going to be two main instances when you're going to use movement routes. The first one's going to be actually using an event right here to make something move, like the player. But if you recall from a previous tutorial, we can also make NPCs customize routes by using a custom route, then selecting route, then doing all this stuff right here. So for example, we can do like down, down, left, left, up, up, right, right, and they'll move in that exact pattern. Now, I want you to focus on something right here, these two guys, repeat movements and skip if cannot move. We're going to be focused on these guys because they're pretty important. Repeat movements, as you can probably guess, that means this person can continuously repeat these movements for as long as they can. Anyway, the second one is going to be skip if cannot move, which is going to mean everything's going to be skipped if it cannot move. So for example, if this person tries to move up and they can't move up, it's going to go down to the next one. If they still can't move up, they're going to go down to the next one. And if they can move right, they're going to move right. And that's pretty much how skip if cannot move will work. So now, as you can see, our NPC right there is moving in the route we specified, which is down, down, left, left, up, up, then right, right. Of course, I can see they're going pretty slow because their frequency is pretty slow. The speed is pretty slow. It's all like really medium, to be honest. And yeah, as you can expect, it's it's not going to be going that fast. But anyway, we're not going to be focusing on that anyway, because we're going to be focusing on everything else. Move lower left, move lower right, upper left, upper right. Those are going to be diagonal movements. As you can probably guess, they're just going to move diagonally when doing so. Move at random, they're going to move at a random direction, which could be up, down, left, or right. Move toward player, if this is used in an event, this will mean the actual event will move towards a tile that's closest to the player. And of course, the opposite would be move away from player. One step forward would be a step forward in the direction they're looking. So if they're looking up, they're going to move up. If they're looking down, they're going to move down. And of course, step backward is going to be the opposite. So if they're looking up, they're going to move down. If they're looking left, they're going to move right. Jump is a little crazy. It's the thing that lets you jump to a certain position with the actual jump animation occurring. We'll get into that later. But next is wait, which of course is going to wait a certain amount of frames. So if we did something like wait 10 frames, Whoa, I hit jump instead of wait. But if we did wait and we did 10 frames, that will make it so this thing will pause for 10 frames till doing its next thing, as you saw us do in the previous tutorial. We also have turn down, turn left, turn right, turn up. As you can probably imagine, they're just going to make the player turn in that specified direction. Turn 90 degrees right, turn 90 degrees left. That means they're just going to turn one, like once to the right or to the left of themselves. And of course, turn 180 is going to make them turn completely around. Turn 90 degrees right or left, which is going to be random. Turn at random, which means, of course, can be a random direction, up, down, left, right. Turn towards the player. Turn away from the player. You get all this. Switch on, switch off. Okay, so from call, we can now change switches inside these movement routes, so that's pretty cool. We can change the speed and the frequency of the event and the player itself. So if we set the speed of the player, like, really fast, like, four times fast, that's actually going to set it so the player is going to be moving that fast. And, in fact, that's also going to make it so the player is going to be permanently that fast, even when the player is controlling the actual player. So... It's very important that during a cutscene, if you make the player move faster, like make it speed 6, that you reset their speed at the very end by doing normal, which is going to be speed 4, and hit OK. Otherwise, they're going to be going crazy. But let's demonstrate the speed by going like down, down, left, left, and yeah. Oh, maybe not, maybe not down, just down once. There we go. And so, we also have walking animation on and off, stepping animation on and off. If we recall, walking animation is going to be whether the animation for the player is occurring when they're walking. So if it's on, they're going to be stepping around when they're walking. If it's turned off, that means they're not going to be stepping when they move. We also have the stepping animation. This is going to be stepping when they're standing still. So if the player is standing still and this is turned on, they're going to be stepping. If the player is standing still and this is turned off, they're going to be standing there. We also have directional fix on and off. And of course, this is going to make so their direction does not change, even if they move in a certain direction. So for example, if you want like an enemy or actor or NPC to move backwards because they're like pushed or something, but you don't want them to turn around when they move backwards, you'd set directional fix on. And now it'll cause them to stay in that specific direction. 
And of course, keep in mind, you also want to turn it back off at the end if you want them to be a normal NPC. Through, on, and through, off. This will make it so the player can move through them. So if we set this on, they would actually be trans like move throughable, not transparent, but you can actually walk through them. But transparent, of course, will turn them invisible. So if we turn this on, the player would be invisible. Then we can make it move left, left, right, right, and they'd be invisible the entire time. Then we turn it back off. We also have change image. This allows you to actually change the image of the event that this is occurring in. So if we set this to like this guy right here, that actually change the image of the actor probably, I think. We'll find out anyway. Change opacity, we can make him like halfway opacity. So 255 is completely solid. But if we did something like 125, that'd be like halfway solid. If we do something like 10, that'd be almost invisible. Let's do 126, 156, okay, fine by me. This is of course a blend mode in which a character is drawn. You want to experiment with this, see what you want, but for the most part, you can just like try that out. It's it's pretty weird, but it can be cool at sometimes. We can also play a sound effect, and they can also use a script call. So we can write something like alert, hi, her, he. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <coughs> I sneezed. Oh, okay, we're done here. Let's do this. So now when we walk through the store, that auto run events can do all that crazy stuff to our player. So let's prepare our bodies. All right, let's do this. Here we go. We're going in. We're gonna move up. Oh, whoa. Oh, okay, yeah, see? That's why you want weight events, because it, it, like, it really makes things weird. And of course, I can see, we turned the opacity to 156, so now they're, like, somewhat invisible. And you also turned, like, the blend mode to, like, screen, so that also changed some stuff up. Yeah. And here's another cool thing. Look, look at this. So they're skipping if cannot move. So if we stand in front of them, they cannot move, so they skip straight to the next thing. So instead of moving like in each direction twice, we can stop and make them do it once. So there we go. They'll move twice. But then if we go above them, they'll be forced to turn in the other direction, like that. And we get in front of them, they'll be forced to go down. And so I believe we mentioned this before, but just once again to reiterate, re bleh, reiterate it is important to make it so your NPCs can or cannot be blocked to make sure they things happen and stuff. But anyway, that's really all for this tutorial. We'll be getting to the big cuts and stuff in the next tutorial, where we'll actually be creating our own intro scene for our game. But that's all for this tutorial. Until next time, RPG Maker tutorial and and stuff.